Hello and welcome to Newsclick. We are uh, joined today by Leslie Xavier, the sports editor for Newsclick.in. And we are talking about, uh, of course, India's performance at the Olympic Games recently concluded. We are also back from under a rock where we were hibernating, uh, watching the games from a distance. So, of course, cheering the Indian athletes uh, as well as looking at what went right and what went wrong for India. And the context in which, uh, the present context of what is happening in the country and how all of the processes uh, that go into the preparation of an athlete, into the preparation of a team, how all of that culminates in uh, the Olympic process and, and the Olympic Games actually. Uh, it's been a long time in the making. Of course, the Games were delayed, uh, as we all know, because of the pandemic. Uh, so, one year later than they were supposed to start. And we've seen massive advertisements from the Indian team and the main protagonists of the Indian team saying that those extra 365 days or however many days there were have actually aided them, allowed them to train more, uh, allowed them to focus more and benefited in, I suppose, some uh, various other ways. And how much of an effort it's taken collectively to make it even possible for our athletes, given the condition that India is in and given all of the sort of tumultuous, turbulent, difficult situations that we've had to deal with in combating the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so now that the noise has subsided a little bit, we thought it, it's an opportune time to uh, have a chat to understand what went right, what went wrong, and how perhaps we can look at sport in India from a systemic perspective, as well as, of course, celebrate the individual achievements of the athletes who have done well, particularly of uh, Neera Chopra and the six, well, six Hello. other medalists, but there's a team as yeah, well, yeah. so several more. Uh, let's see, good to, good to, yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, team sport has the charm, right? So, uh, yeah, hockey medal is, is as, as if India, collective India won that way. It's taken it as such because there's a historic connection as well where hockey was the first medal that we won at the Olympic Games post-independence and it represented the country onto the global stage that way. So, it's a, it's a, it's a symbolic victory always. It's always been celebrated like that. Yeah, you were saying something. Yeah, yeah. Like no, I, I was, I was, I mean, we are trying to, of, of course, condense two weeks of uh, athletic yeah. sort of process into one conversation. But more than that, we're also looking at the previous five year cycle yeah. that has gone into the training of these athletes and and the system that supports them and taxpayers who support them and, and all of that that goes in. Uh, but uh, so, so it's a challenging, challenging thing to do, especially given that we have uh, approached this without a proper rundown and, <laughs> and our own structure being in place. But, but so let's start with uh, Neera Chopra then, because it was the most recent and obviously it's also the first and only time that an Indian athlete has won an athletics gold medal yeah. at the Olympic Games. So, what do you make of Neeraj? Uh, he's young, uh, of course, he's been trained and supported by the army and, and the government uh, in his efforts. Uh, but beyond that, what do you make of Neeraj as both an individual, as an athlete? And what do you make of the system that uh, goes into preparing some someone like Neeraj or an Olympic gold medalist in this kind of individual uh, sort of pursuit? So, individual sport is a different beast altogether. We started off by talking about hockey and how it represents the country and all that. So, when when a program is being devised for for team sport, it's it's uh, there are a lot of uh, considerations about compositions, the factors in 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 gameplay and all that. But individual is is uh, it's not a uh, uh, as far as I see. Uh, when these these athletes are governed by federation, right? They they oversee their preparations and all that. But Neeraj, his journey, when you look at it, or for instance, any of those athletes who have won uh, individual medals at the games for India, they also have that innate drive to excel. That that mindset that we are there and we could win. Be it Meera Bhai Chanu, be it P.V. Sindhu. Mm -hmm. I mean, P.V. Sindhu, for instance, is like, I mean, if, if you can compare, she's like any other pro athlete in the, in the, in the, on tour, in, on badminton. Mm -hmm. So they, they compete as a professional uh, through the circuit, the badminton, International Badminton Federation circuit, and then uh, they have their own ranking system. Sindhu is ranked seventh in the world. And, uh, 
from there you sort of recalibrate into this Olympic Games where you have to. Uh, so in that regard, when uh, I would like to quote Aditi, uh, the golfer. Mm. So she said that I didn't know. I mean, it's it's very difficult for her to do this recalibration when you play on the golf tour. You have that idea that you can finish 10th and also you are earning something, you are earning ranking points, you are celebrated as well. I mean, for instance, in a major, if you finish 10th, it's it's an achievement in itself. You earn money, you earn accolades, whatever that comes with that. Mm. Ranking points, uh, rise in rankings, whatever. But in Olympics, someone asked her the question, first up, a wrong thing to answer. Um, journalists should also be a little <laughs> diligent about such things because how do you feel like getting into this fourth place club? So she said, I didn't know that there is a club that celebrated and it's weird for me in the sense to... Uh, so that's 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 the whole, whole different idea of individual sp sport. But within that individual realm, there, is, there are events like boxing where there is a lot of uh, uh, molding of the athlete requires that support structure around. Uh, where a Lovelina Borogain can't pursue her career like a PV Sindhu. Mm. She is dependent on the government sending her for competitions. Mm. She is dependent on, on the structure provided by the training facilities of the government. Sindhu trained, Sindhu trained in England. Lovelina trained at the Sai Center. So, 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 that, so when we look at Olympics as a collective uh, uh, a group of events happening, there are individual dynamics in there. So when we take Neeraj Chopra's achievement and when we take Bajrang Punia's achievement, of course, there are, these are individual medals. But uh, the the path that the athlete goes through in wrestling to reach a bronze medal and the path that Neeraj took to reach gold medal, these two are entirely different. So getting back to Neeraj, how special it is, Neeraj was a special is a, I mean, was a special talent, I would say, because his talent has reached that no, potential no. now. Yeah, so it's it's actualized, mm. and from here where that's that's another question altogether. Mm. Of course, he has to. I mean, he's young, is in his mid twenties, so he has to push himself further. He, he has at least two Olympics of prime left. So next Olympics being very close. So, uh, but his journey. I mean, so we have to take into perspective the idea that we don't look at the five-year Olympic cycle. Let's go back further down. So his journey is in the sport in itself. It's it's just nine year old, which is uh, which is small for a Olympic champion. So that that probably says a lot about the talent that Neeraj possesses, mm. but it also says a lot about how bad our scouting system or the feeding system is. So, Neeraj got into the sport by chance and uh, uh, he was just asked by a senior who was training, ki, are you interested in throwing? Yeah. And he said, yeah, let me try. And they realized that he has a natural flair for it, trained, got into the system and then, and then from there, uh, all these private entities who support Indian sport, the top athletes, something like a OGQ or a Go Sport. Uh, Neeraj is uh, JSW athlete, so JSW sport. So they get into it much later. So Neeraj proved himself with medals at the junior levels. He then got into that structure where he got into the TOPS program as well as getting funding and then the real preparation happened. Like how do you get from a junior to, to that higher level? That's where uh, training abroad and the long stints abroad, getting a foreign coach to work on the body dynamics, biodynamics and all that. And it's, it all cul culminated perfectly to such an extent that he didn't, at the grand stage, he was ready for the stage, mm. which which his biggest rival was not, yeah. surprisingly. So the man, Johannes Wetter, who is throwing 90 meter plus and uh, to be fair, we, we I mean, I myself, I, I, I just, till, till, till the medal happened, I was just thinking that he can't win gold. Next throw, somebody yeah, will. somebody will, because I knew he can touch his personal best or close to that. Yeah. That much of respect we had for Neeraj Chopra because he has proven that and he is, and uh, yeah. Time and again in competition, he has yeah. uh, 
bettered his own better in better in so that's that's that critical point that where uh, in at the olympics it's it's not just consistency it's not just technical brilliance but there is also this factor which which has to fall in place and neeraj uh, the team around him and it's obvious and it's also his personal drive at all because neeraj is one athlete who has who has constantly been vocal about i need this i need that mm. Mm. and sometimes i mean we journalists have also found it a little this thing that, so apparently one uh, 1.8 crore was spent on his preparations by tops tops in, in how many years in the in the olympic cycle in the five year cycle five years five year cycle so and how uh, does that uh, sorry uh, maybe this is a bit distracting but how does that compare with let's say another top athlete in another sport from another country Mm-mm. uh in terms of what is spent in 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 their training and development is it at par is it more is it less uh, in your opinion what happens with with athletes abroad is that a part of it they are on their own they have to find which is why the indian system is is uh, as it's po- positives that way because athlete is is taken care of the by, by the system provided he is there mm. uh so it's a top heavy system so uh, someone like a vetter would 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 also need to figure out his his private resources backers sponsorships, and sponsorships etc., etc. and and someone like uh, neeraj chopra the sponsorships and the endorsements and the deals which come now it's all it's all personal of course he will use some of it to push push himself further but otherwise the entire uh, program is yeah it's a bureaucratic mess but it's 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 met by the met, met by the government so the same thing applies so this is something that we have spoken about in the previous games as all as well a us multiple gold medalist would probably be looking for a job mm-hmm. after the games mm-hmm. while a, while a indian bronze medalist is a multi millionaire after that he can just sit and relax and so that's that's the difference also uh, with the government job mostly. also with the government job yeah. with pension whatever yeah. so that's that's the difference in system but it also has its problems because uh being top heavy the problem with funding like a tops mm. is that you only give it to people who have broken through fighting all the odds that are all the pitfalls that are there so so as as an athlete as uh, when do you need the support i mean it's a uh, simple example that i i can give from my personal experience is that when i was i mean i used to wrestle at at a much lower level nationals and all i used to compete so when i used to train i used to get there is a company called pama in pama in jalandhar so i used to get the shoes from them running shoes uh, nivya wrestling shoes so uh, pama shoes was 250 bucks for a pair and now i i am far from wrestling far from any sort of professional sport and i wear a six shoe and all those things <laughs> and walk to the park and come back so when i needed these shoes yeah. i it was not there it's not like if i had got an asics i would have been a olympic medalist no i was never that talented or not, never that diligent in training but that's that's the example that's the, that's the thing i want to say so someone like be it anybody someone like neeraj or i mean we have stories of bajrang punia struggling at the early part and then luckily he had a mentor in yogeshwar who would you you would give some money for the dietary requirement when he was junior and when he was not better off so mm. so these kind of small small help athletes help each other like for instance i have heard that mirabai chanu does that for the kids at the academy in fact we did a story by bob ragunandan we did a story after mirabai chanu won a silver uh, talking to our first coach mm. in 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 manipur right. and uh, she said uh, about the time that this girl walked into the training hall uh, 11 years old she was and uh, then she was one of many and now when mirabai enters that academy again she will see under the other mirabais because everybody has the same back story yeah. and so she, she having reached a place she helps out so that kind of a, so uh, i would say a top of the system has its problems because 
yeah because we stop heavy. because stop <laughs> because yeah it earns us medals so seven medals we can celebrate but then the problem is that what next uh, what what about 2028 yeah. So, uh, or, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, I don't, hmm. don't jump the gun. We won't get into the what next yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I myself wrote a story saying that <laughs> we shouldn't be doing that. Yeah. Well, we can't help because, that no, either. No, we, we, and we'll get to it in this yeah, conversation yeah. itself. But just before we get there uh, to what next, uh, just a, a little more on what, what is actually. And, and in that context, uh, firstly, something like a javelin throw. जैसे हमारे भी जो देखने वाले लोग हैं बहुत कम ऐसे होंगे हु हैव एक्सेस टू अवलिन राइट ठीक है हम हिंदी में तो कहते हैं भाला फेंक बट इतना वो कॉमन या इतना सिंपल नहीं है कि आप कहीं भी आप पार्क में खेल रहे हैं तो आप जाके आपको चांस मिल गया भाला फेंकने का ऐसा नहीं होता है तो फॉर इवन नीरज टू हैव एक्सेस टू दैट फर्स्ट इवेंट और दैट फर्स्ट सेटिंग वेयर ही गॉट अ चांस टू ट्राई इट हाउ चैलेंजिंग इज दैट फॉर समन हु इज ऑन द ग्राउंड एंड लेट्स से इज अ यंग बॉय और गर्ल और एनी अदर जेंडर प्लेइंग स्पॉट एट द एज ऑफ एट और टेन एंड वॉन्ट्स टू मे बी परस्यू दिस लिटल मोर सीरियसली well it's <laughs> odds are like stacked beyond imagination unless now for instance panipat has produced neeraj so maybe they will start a center there so panipat boys and girls might might get a better chance mm. but uh, talent doesn't come from a fixed pocket especially especially in events like events such as uh, athletics because if you look at running or jumping or so but uh getting back to your question so uh in my college days and we had at least training all over the place no? so I, I, we had a champion javelin thrower the university champion uh, all india university champion that year in fact uh, anthony his name was he, he he left because he had a fractured shoulder and he had to leave the sport altogether but uh uh for him when he was training initially he was training without a coach he had some district coach when he was in school level and in college there was no coach uh, coach specifically for javelin so the the thing with javelin is that when if you are a running if you are a running athlete if you are a running track race athlete. track athlete mm-hmm. uh you can make do with probably a sprint coach also because the basic workout it's it, basic sure. drills basic and certain sense of the sport transcends here of course it's not ideal but at least you have a coach mm. but javelin you need specialized coaches for throw it's 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 simple because the i mean you have seen uh, these athletes throw at the at the, at the olympic level the and after the after the games after neeraj's gold i went to yans alexnis youtube video just to see because some i mean neeraj himself was quoted earlier that he was his uh right. idol and he, he he used to watch youtube videos try to mimic him and then picked up some of it then subsequently coaches corrected things but the technique i wanted to see what exactly follow through falling off kind of a style mm. so uh it's not like run take the momentum follow through specific angles are involved so 45 degree angle when you're in this position i mean that video was showing everything the release the foot position everything to the tails like rocket science so uh, that kind of a correction need to happen at the, at the, at the starting level and it 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 never happened for my friend who i am mentioning uh, plus being a javelin thrower it's a very long, lonely process uh, be it be it this fellow antony or be it another there was this another amathlo so rainy season at the college ground we are going to the wrestling hall and i see this guy and uh, he is doing something i said what is this guy doing so apparently he threw the hammer and he went into some ditch water logged so he can't find it so he's like doing this he's trying to figure it out and then he takes it back and then runners give him gali saying that because there's no net production and all when you are training right mm-hmm. so i said uh, so when they come they're just giving 
abusive this thing is. Don't throw now, can't you see we are running? So, uh, it's training, yeah, it's not his job to look at the window. I don't know. So, yeah, runners have their own uh, reason why they do that. But, so th these are, I mean, so, and you're talking about Kerala, where it produces a lot of athletes, yeah. and then you're talking about a college which is good in sport, and then this is what a, a javelin athlete and an amateur athlete was going through. So then imagine a kid who wants to take the javelin now. And so in, in, in my post analysis story, I mentioned the same thing only. We, people have been saying that now we, they will walk. And literally that is the case. You walk into, so my friend had a, I mean, modern javelin for him, personal javelin. In the college PE room, you go in and you have bamboo javelins with rusted tip and you touch that, you might get septic. Mm. So <laughs> it's the same with schools. And people say that okay, boys will start using the language, but uh, using you go inside, pick that up, start throwing and all that. It's not as simple as that. This sport is very nuanced, very, it requires uh, that kind of structure for them to train and bring them up. So yeah. Like I said, Panipat might get an academy now at the grassroots. If it happens, it's great. You might get coaches and all that. So that kind of small changes will happen in the sport post Neeraj. But it's not large enough to, say, create a javelin culture like the Czech Republic. Silver and bronze medalists were yes. Czech Republic. Jan Zelensky's, I mean, <laughs> I mean next, gen, next, next, gen, next generation of Jan. So, so, when we look at Ekto, uh, the other thing about the Olympics is that there is such a vast array of disciplines, right? Up, matlab, from artistic gymnastics to uh, modern pentathlon to uh, equestrian yeah. to obviously then swimming and track and, and, and uh, karate, and karate. And, and now, o obviously, also keeping in mind uh, how technology and how urban lifestyles are changing. So, Sports like uh, skateboarding are making uh, a Next debut. Next break dancing BMX, is coming. Yeah, these kind of things. Yeah. Already at the Asian Games level, uh, some of these are already sports, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you have, there's a lot of talk around e-sports, mm -hmm. or video games yeah, yeah. essentially, becoming a part of the Olympic program as well. Because uh, if you talk about a mass base or mass mm -hmm. participation as a criteria, then e-sports practitioners far outnumber javelin throwers in the world. Yeah, right? probably second only to football. Yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and hockey, yeah. since you mentioned that, is no longer a mass sport in India. It, and uh, uh, Yeah, in India it was at some point, I think. Okay, yeah, but because when I when I've spoken to... Yeah, but yeah, you complete this... No, no, so the, I mean, uh, again, uh, like, there are so... There's such a vast array of disciplines... Uh, there's a vast array of perspectives from which we can view sport, right? So in a country like India, where let's say you are challenged by resources, you don't have a, uh, as such a sporting culture because people are by and large still struggling for basics. Yeah. So the opportunity to spend time and effort and money on things like sport don't necessarily exist as a natural consequence of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, in theory, we might want to say that eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, and eight hours for whatever I want to do, yeah. right? But but in those other eight hours, does the system around me allow me to actually uh, develop into my best self or, pro, you know, pursue whatever it is that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. uh, so in that context, how, how does the establishment view sport? Is it that uh, Olympics will win a medal in the Olympics? Yeah, is it that in our country, which sport should be increased so that the amount of people can play, the amount of people can play, the amount of people can play. So what is the perspective of this? I mean, let's go to Japan only to get into this discussion about the larger idea of uh, societal physical education, if I get, I mean, I'm coining it. So, uh, judo, an Olympic discipline, karate, an Olympic discipline. These two were, I, I mean, so uh, judo is a toothless version of jujitsu. It's a gentler, non-lethal, yeah. sporty version of uh, jujitsu. And karate's original version, which was from Okinawa, 
uh, was not meant to be what we saw. I mean, if, if people have seen the action in Japan, you would see Kata demonstration event and also sparring, which is similar to fencing, mm. where you punch and you don't really knock out the opponent, but you punch and you have to, I mean, it's skill based mm. and sports karate. So, karate was tweaked, made less lethal, the drills were made uh, standardized so that it can be used for mass training. They introduced it into schools, colleges for huge classes where the entire student base come there and train. So one instructor and yeah. many people can follow? Yeah, 200, 300 right. people. You, you, the basic, so the basic Kata uh, a student in Karate learns now is not, unless you have direct lineage to a Okinawan style, mm. it would be something which is sports Karate based, Karate based which came out of Japan, not Okinawa. Mm. And geographically speaking, I mean just to just to give that info, Okinawa is, is an island, it's, it's in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, occupied by Americans during the World War and completely disconnected from the Japanese chain of islands. In fact, Okinawa's connection, if you look at it, would be closer to China than Japan, before Japan took over. So, so that's, that's, that's two sports that I'm giving an example from Japan and how Japan implemented it into the social structure as a means to get their youth and their population fitter. So you become a karate pra practitioner, mm. you become a judo practitioner and you continue it for life. Mm. So it's like you going for a weekend football so, game. So le let me, yeah, I was going to interrupt you also to ask what is, uh, if I'm, let's say, I'm a government, I'm a big minister in the mm. Hindustan. Mein. So if I'm looking at, let's say I'm the sports minister, yeah. right? So, what is, uh, apart from this medals and obviously like the joy and the national prestige, the PR angle of mm -hmm. it, what is the actual, and this might be a very obvious question, so yeah. I apologize, but what is the benefit of uh, giving sport or giving people access to the sport, to any sport, physical activity? Healthy society is, I mean, is a society that will progress. So that's 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 that was the Japanese outlook. For Kiran Riju, Rijiju, who, who was the sports minister till two months back, so this Olympic cycle, he was the biggest contributor. He was at the helm most at the of the time. At the policy level. At the policy level. So sure. he he was celebrating with with champagne. Neeraj Neera Chopra's. I mean, I saw it on Twitter. The video. And so he feels that his legacy as sports minister is fulfilled or it's has reached a certain level which needs celebration because seven medals in India's highest. But for me, if I am a sports administrator, I would look at it differently. I would want legacy to be long lasting. You, that's, that's the whole idea about sport. That's, that, that's why sport is special than any other human endeavor. Mm -hmm. So you look at generations, you look at future, you look at, so when you say healthy society, it's a cliche that we keep throwing about a, sport, a healthy society. So what is an healthy society? It's, it's, it's when you decide that the next generation is healthier, next generation is healthier, or maintain that health idea, the fitness idea. So. So when we devise, you know, I, I would, I, I would have preferred our country, our policymakers devising a system where sport becomes more, more egalitarian, more universal, where everybody plays and everybody plays for the for the beauty of sport, for what it what it gives to the personality, to to your health, to your system, to the to your way of life, to your outlook. And then, of course, the best will always come out because everybody is playing, so mm. the best has to come out. Mm. So this is an idea which uh, Terry Walsh, and I'm mentioning Terry Walsh now because Terry Walsh was the Indian hockey coach 2013-2014, uh, that, that period, and Australian, a great hockey player of his time as well. So he was at the start of this bunch, this generation of hockey players, some of them, had started off under Walsh and Walsh had introduced this uh, idea of fitness and he was telling me before a campaign which the team was going to Europe that uh, I'm focusing on fitness and getting the players up to up to the mark fitness wise and I'm looking at fitness culture not 
match fitness because that fitness culture is important and that's what comes out when India play Australia for instance mm. because Australia everybody plays sport yeah. Australia uh, it, it's a cultural thing so you're saying that years of playing sport from childhood till where you are till where you are as a pro athlete that makes a difference in how your body responds to training responds to peak the plan for peaking all this conditioning all these things so it it things. takes years he said so he's working with this players to introduce that uh, in stages so that at some point they are there mm. it, it 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 just builds so mm. so with indian players he said that it it requires that much more work because that culture is not there mm. and also the other aspects like deficient like getting back to what i, I had said earlier when i discussed mirabai and all that not getting the things and it's not just about shoes it's about dietary food. requirements also food something as yeah, basic something as food as, as yeah. food so so uh, when you when you when you're developing your muscles and you only have that kind of, that period where your hormones kick in mm. pre puberty teenage and then you are off then you are practically dying mm. unless you keep on building yourself sports persons do that yeah. but that that building stage of muscles of the muscle spurt, memory, yeah spurt uh, in that sense we have to tap into that and that's where we lose out too yeah so uh, walsh's idea of of that fitness so that that again uh, will draw from the larger base that we can create if if we if we work on if if the establishment if the ministers if if the policy makers work on a on building a larger base and it's not result based it's 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 more culture based it's participation it's participation based, based. Mm-hmm. so that so that i mean opportunities are there and in delhi capital so many stadiums over here i i have had kids who, who don't have access to grounds because the grounds i mean i'm not talking about pre pandemic days not mm. not now now to no one has yeah, access no to yeah no one has access to grounds in any yeah. case so in the societies i and i've had this argument with with my the the flat society that i live in where the parks are there brilliantly manicured kids are not allowed to play because all people need to walk the pots will be broken uh, broken all these things uh, all these discussions debates fights kids are scolded and one or two uncles like me would stand up and say there's an you know chai and they should play and mm-hmm. then then i would go on a rant saying that olympics when olympics come we say we are not winning medal this is why we are not winning so jaise hua in fact jaise is baar hua bahut sare logon ne share kiya ki स्कूल में क्या होता है आप आपके दिन में दस क्लासेस होते हैं या हफ्ते में सौ क्लासेस होते हैं उसमें से आप एक में आप कुछ खेलते हैं बाकी निन्यानवे में तो आप पढ़ाई करते हैं तो फिर कैसे होगा कि आप ओलंपिक्स में सडनली जाके मेडल जीतेंगे राइट और जो लड़ाइयाँ भी होती हैं आजकल तो वो भी व्हाट्सएप पे ही होती हैं किसी ने कोई मीम पोस्ट कर दिया या कुछ ना कि तराजू डाल दिया एक तरफ किताबें हैं दूसरी तरफ कोई मेडल जीत रहा है तो बट या नो दिस इज दीज आर आई थिंक इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड आई थिंक वी गॉन एक्चुअली क्वाइट a lot into our time because we have uncle lesley with us and uncle lesley <laughs> is not just uh, an athlete himself but he's also as as you can make out i think hey, uncle. <laughs> he is he is a zen master he is a, a martial arts practitioner and uh, he has a very interesting both uh, lived experience as well as, as a perspective on how sport can become a thing and we have often these conversations i think and this is uh, to our audience as well as to one another that we often has have these conversations uh, within our circles of w- what the import or the value or the relevance of sport is a- in a country where so many other things are going on yeah. there is uh, you know on the political front on the economic front on 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 a public health front mm-hmm. uh, and i think uh, looking at sport as primarily a public health issue mm. uh, is one perspective that I, that can really contextualize very well uh, many of these conversations and so even though we came to this starting point as an idea to discuss india's entire performance of at the olympic games we have not unfortunately gotten past neeraj chopra yet so what we will do is uh, we will make you this promise and uh, on camera with leslie sitting here since he has already said that he cannot say no to us <laughs> <laughs> that we will uh, have more i think uh, kya kehte hain broken down conversations mm-hmm. about the various disciplines in which india has performed well and 
uh, sort of sort of looking at how but, we have how we, gotten yeah, to that stage, stage and right level. and mm. particularly sport like hockey uh, maybe we'll also digress into football and yeah. things like that because there's a shared history and a, yeah, and yeah. a kind of culture there that that kind of feeds into the whole thing mm. so so we will get back to that but but so maybe you guys can treat this as a one hour long teaser teaser of, yeah of uh, uh, the olympics might have finished but our coverage of the olympics is just, just beginning just started preview of preview to <laughs> the yeah. games happens no yeah <laughs> absolutely and uh, and a preview that is actually leading into because also it is uh, i i can understand that in in terms of the language that we use and and the, some of the context that we are applying uh, it sounds like an ableist perspective that hmm. only if you are sound of body na agar aap khelne ja rahe hain aap medal jeetne ja rahe hain to हाथ पैर आपके या आपके फैकल्टीज जो हैं वो एक डिफाइंड सेट ऑफ नॉर्मल के अंदर होने चाहिए राइट mm-hmm. right? या आपके कुछ पैरामीटर्स होने चाहिए जिस पे आप फिजिकली मीट करते हैं देन ओनली विल यू बी इन्वेस्टेड इन कि आपको कोई टाइम देगा आपको कोई कोच करेगा आपको कोई मौका देगा खेलने का या कहीं जाने का बट oh, ऐसा the... fact, वो ये फैक्ट नहीं है बिकॉज yeah. कुछ ही दिनों में पैरालिम्पिक्स mm-hmm. शुरू होने वाले हैं mm-hmm. and and both paralympics as well as the parallel special olympics mm-hmm. movement that also talks about some of these kind of issues yeah. so so we'll get into uh, some of these uh, conversations as well of like how why sport is not just relevant to one or two or a gender or uh, from any one perspective and particularly not uh, from a perspective of becoming rich or winning medals only yes yeah. if that is a consequence of it Happily great, so, great. great yeah. Great, I yeah. mean, uh, more power to Neera Chopra yeah. and Lovely Nambar Gohain and uh, Meera Bai Chanu and uh, yeah, you know, uh, all great, of these, remarkable, uh, great people, journey. Uh, they deserve the respect. They have become. They have. I mean, on top of the world that way in their respective fields. So yeah, but uh, the larger, larger cases for 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 the entire population. Like we are celebrating, but we we are celebrating with the disconnect hmm. because we don't understand javelin. Yeah, we don't understand. After all, well, North India yeah different, but otherwise you don't understand wrestling. wrestling. You don't understand boxing. Yeah. So, yeah, totally. so what 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 took uh, Bajrang Punia to have that bout when he had any knee injury, which was serious? It's 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 you understand it if you mm. if you understand that sport. I'm not saying you should. Everybody should wrestle tomorrow, but in the US it's mandatory in school you wrestle. Hmm. And it, ah, I mean, at yeah. some level, uh, yeah, at some, some level of there is a period activity, you have to do wrestling. Yeah, for a yeah. gym gym yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, you have had movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Where yeah. where Kansas the nerd is upset that he has to do wrestling, but okay. yeah, that's yeah. that's how it is. So no, there 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 was a bit uh, by I think Chomsky many years ago. Many mm-hmm. people have commented on it from various perspectives. Mm-hmm. Obviously, sport is something that is I think universally at some level, whether we relate to it or not, we feel like we have. Each of us has the right to comment on it. Yeah. Right. So Chomsky was saying that a in high school or something he was watching a game of basketball, and uh, where he didn't know the people who, who were playing and he had no equation with them. He didn't mm-hmm. relate to the sport. So why should he be watching? Fair. Yeah. Uh, and it's yeah, a it's a very personal I think yeah, and yeah. limited perspective and and I'm not like taking on yeah. <laughs> a giant yeah. uh, like that but but the fact is that he did find it worthy enough to make a comment on on yeah. the subject yeah. and i think from from that perspective we can continue some of these discussions yeah uh, uh, like really and like you said uh, with the paralympics coming up and uh, for me it's a it's a it's a larger event because it's it 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 convey i mean it it conveys the olympic ideal i mean in a in a much more uh, what do you call that <laughs> idealist way mm. in at the paralympics the inclusiveness mm. the 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 chance for everybody to compete, yeah. compete i mean in that sense of course you have to qualify to be there yeah of course it's yeah. not that they are not competing to be the best exactly. at, at what they are doing yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's just that there, there is a little bit less focus on on i think the hyper achievers uh, or or the the super mm. achievers or the yeah. world record breakers and and like a long time ago i think i was reading somewhere i don't know uh, about how in many ways india is the last bastion of uh, the idea that the olympic movement is an amateur movement mm mm-hmm. That you ठीक है आप खेलते हैं लेकिन आप साइड पे खेलते हैं लाइक अगर आप अभी भी एनालिसिस करें इंडिया की जो टीम है उसका तो आई थिंक आधे से ज्यादा एथलीट्स या तो 
फौज में है या पुलिस में है स्टेट पुलिस में है या सेंट्रल पुलिस सर्विसेज में है या हॉकी टीम को अगर देखें तो आई थिंक 90 परसेंट आर रेलवेज एम्प्लॉज तो तो इन दैट सेंस आई एम अच्छा कि आपका मेन जॉब जिससे आपका क्या कहते हैं खर्चा पानी निकलता है वो कुछ और है और ये अपने आप फ्री टाइम में कर रहे हैं जैसे जो वॉट द ब्रिट्स आई गेस ट्राइड टू प्रोपोगेट विद यू नो दॉर मिनट माइलर्स एंड एंड ऑल ऑफ दीज गैस द आइडिया ऑफ दिस ऑक्सफर्ड एजुकेटेड स्टूडेंट एथलीट यू नो विच इन सम इन सम आई गेस केसेज स्टिल हैपन्स टूडे बट वॉट दैट एक्चुअली मीन्स एंड हाउ इंडिया इज पर्स द लास्ट प्लेस वेर दिस एक्चुअली हैपन्स because in the end the fight is not so much for a medal for most participants yeah, but it's for that job and yeah, that financial yeah. security ki aapke aapke aapki roti kahan se aap makan kahan se aa raha hai and uh, your family can then have a place to you know live and uh, so now they have raised that point so that's that's another thing so there is that mindset issue that happens with at least so at some point that that tipping point happens and where only few at least escape the seven who won i mean seven plus the team yeah. players who won the medal yeah. and the others because then you make that it's not a, it's not a easy choice it's not a deliberate choice mm. either but you realize at certain point be yeah i need this job i need to and so then that you lose yeah and you this, have to i mean yeah. you have to focus this, on one thing yeah, or the other right? this is exactly the point that i d- discussed in the story that i wrote on bhavani devi who made a debut non medalist so we, uh, now she is forgotten but the debut was celebrated she would have she could have made the debut in rio mm. had had things been uh, had, had she been sent for competitions and she qualified then mm. and she was good enough then younger and better mm. and she was part of a bunch of great fencing fencers trained in si center in kerala in kodikod where uh, i spoke to the coach for that story and he mentioned that almost all of them have, the rest of the bunch have all stopped in the sense the serious competition they are focusing on their jobs government jobs whatever they may manage with the with the national medals with the small small international yeah. medals that they got and they stop bhavani devi almost stopped in 2016 when she didn't make it mm. just that uh, the coach encouraged her and a year later gosport foundation got Better. into selected her. i mean it's just things falling into place luckily for her she trains abroad in italy now and then obviously it shows so so it's it, the the same same idea that uh, job it it sometimes act as a bit of a problem especially for athletes who have gone there mm. so uh, indian sport is like the country itself it's it's very tricky it's a minefield if you get into it trying to argue for something because there's always yeah. always course, always uh, always something to prove the opposite to prove the opposite so you it's it's great that that these athletes are getting jobs it's great that the government support is there for athletes to train but then again i presented the case that top heavy so grassroots are being ignored ignored athletes are not getting when they want it uh, so so that's probably why it's 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 again the culture idea is is uh, is a, a larger thing because in over time in 20 30 40 years time you will reach a stage where where these things won't matter because uh, sport is that entrenched into the into the lifestyle that happens in north india in wrestling yeah and it's not like it's not like bajrang is was born yesterday yeah, it's yeah. because there is sure. a feeding system around everybody wrestles and, mm. and they come out yeah. so and uh, the reason why even a, a sort of foreign commentator who is uh, so telling us about the yeah. feed, uh, the yeah. sport when the world feed is happening yeah. can say that ki uh, all india ke sare wrestler haryana se hi aate hain but uh, there bhai uh, unko bhi pata hai but uh, yeah but there <laughs> is <laughs> no no there are I, i agree with you i agree with you but before <laughs> no, you take off on, on the other story <laughs> yeah. I, i'm going to put an end to this <laughs> no, but conversation this has to be discussed because today <laughs> yeah because this has to be discussed because haryana because there is a larger politics at there yes of course so, as, so, as always yeah, yeah, yeah. and sport and that, politics uh, are india's first uh, uh, olympic wrestling medalist came from maharashtra kiri yadav hmm. and last edition a maharashtrian wrestler got into controversy with our great sushil kumar and couldn't compete he got i mean he got he got got for doping i mean doping i don't know what exactly it was he served his ban mm. uh, so yeah 
<laughs> yeah. yeah, so so I think lots of uh, we have laid. I think you have laid the foundation for for several conversations enough at least to keep us and you uh, busy and occupied uh, for the next couple of weeks as well as during the course of the the Paralympics when I think Indian athletes will give us a lot more to celebrate uh, and a lot more to feel happy yeah. about. Uh, I I don't think we'll have huge numbers again. And uh, I don't think suddenly overnight it's not a sporting revolution that is hitting uh, India, mm. but it's a gradual process of uh, change and and uh, I, I suppose growth in that sense and and following some of these athletes, what it does give us is it gives us a new peg. Today, mm. yeah. SEO ki dunya mein hum That's Google exactly. ki dunya mein rehte hain. So if there is a news peg, it will be easy to talk about it for everyone. It's not that Neera Chopra won the javelin gold medal, so we will all reach out to the stadium after the javelin. Yeah. Or not to play hockey. Hmm. Uh, because hockey is also expensive, hai, dangerous. Hai. Yeah. There are all things. Exactly. And sport, sport doesn't work with revolution. That's my look at mm. things it's it's very clear i mean even when you talk about cricket 83 world cup it mm. it, it took 20 years for for and 20 years of whatever uh, systematic non systematic whatever bcci and the however it happened however yeah. it happened yeah. Yeah. but it took that much time and it took stars also it took sachin tendulkar it took the rest of the guys who came yeah. subsequently yeah. to to take cricket the where it is Bo bollywood marriages between Mm. Ah, everything, everything, Between everything Pagodi feeds into the Sharmila to go yeah, and, everything and feeds into the that, yeah. entire thing the, and it becomes the television revolution. All of these, yeah, for sure. So many things to talk about, and and if uh, if Ram Goa could write a thousand page book on uh, you know the history of cricket in India and how we've gotten to that stage, there's no reason why Leslie and I can't talk for a thousand plus minutes yeah. <laughs> on, on some of these subjects. Even though there is a clear disconnect between us and uh, uh, the guys in the guys, studio who are already <laughs> passing out and uh, sending us not so subtle uh, hints to keep quiet and leave. So we will take your leave on, on that note. Uh, thanks, Lizzie. Yeah, it's been great, it's always, always great talking to you. Yeah, and thank you for watching. If you are, if not, uh, well, you know, it's a good time to start. <laughs>